bless you today uh, and uh, welcome to my brothers and sisters even on uh, YouTube or Zoom wherever they may be. Uh, it was uh, good that we prayed about the weather and I noticed the weather has been quite uh, severe and I pray that uh, we will have the protection we need right and uh, we also prayed for uh, persecution I just came to know I don't know if you have heard of this bishop in is it a Sydney uh, and Sydney right and in Bangalore also right uh, Mari Mari uh, someone Emmanuel or something he was stabbed apparently his life is uh, I mean it's, it's serious but he's stable so um, right. Well, we have uh, a lot of uh, shepherd shepherd talk today, and uh, you probably have heard the scripture that is read to us, and you will notice there are so many things about the good shepherd, right? Uh, we know who the good shepherd is. Take a look at that picture. What can we say about that picture? Uh, I remember many years back I had gone for a course, counseling course and uh, I came back and uh, I, I brought with me a picture which is on the notice board there with the shepherd uh, with a sheep in his hand. Uh, maybe you want to have a look at it. But if you look at that picture, what can you say about it? Intimacy? A picture of intimacy? Can we say a leader who cares? Safety? Providing safety? Who knows us? If a sheep can nestle in the arms of the shepherd, that means that sh shepherd knows the sheep and the sheep knows the shepherd. Just as we saw the video, the sh sheep even knows the voice of the shepherd. What else can we say about that picture? A shepherd who is close, and when we say close, we can say, I mean, we can be reminded of the scripture, never leave you, never forsake you. And a shepherd who even lays down his life for us. Why is he called a good shepherd? Why is Jesus Christ? Obviously, we know it's referring to Jesus Christ. Why is he called a good shepherd? Now there are many ways we can look at it, but I am going to focus on one. And that is, it's a contrast. It's because the contrast is between types of shepherds. Right? Uh, as we were led in the reading, John 10, I don't know if I've got that on my... Like I'm not. Okay, that's I don't have that. Let me read that scripture again. You already heard it. Uh, the, notice the contrast. John 10 verse 11. I am the good shepherd. Jesus refers to himself as a good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Right? Verse 12. The contrast. The hired hand is not the shepherd. And does not own the sheep. He does not have the concept of shepherding. So when he sees the wolf coming. He abandons the sheep and runs away. And then the wolf attacks the flock. And scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand. And cares nothing for the sheep. Notice the contrast. The good shepherd. And a so called shepherd. Who really doesn't care. Right. Now it's natural. That a shepherd that 
loves the sheep and owns the sheep will have very, very strong feelings for the sheep, right? Uh, when compared to the one who does not own it. And so Jesus is telling us, he owns us. We are his sheep. And that is why he has such deep feelings that he is willing to lay down his life for us. You know, and when I was just looking at, uh, as of preparing the message, I was shocked with the kind of words that are being used in the scriptures about shepherds. God has such an intense view of shepherds and shepherding. There is words of strong disapproval. And then there are words of passion. Right? <coughs> Sorry. And one such is given in the, is, is, is even told to the prophet Ezekiel with regards to shepherding. And that is, uh, read with me uh, as I uh, go to Ezekiel 34. I've taken this from Ezekiel 34. The word of the Lord came to me. Here is the word of the Lord coming to Ezekiel, wanting Ezekiel to tell the people about shepherds. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to you shepherds of Israel who only take care of yourselves. What a contrast from the good shepherd. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with the wool. Uh, you eat the curds, clothe yourself with the wool and slaughter the choice animals. But you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. Look at them. I mean, I can't imagine the words that are being used about shepherds. They are so strong, so intense. They are so much in your face that Jesus or, 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 the, or God Almighty Bring such an ind indicting against the shepherds of Israel. Let me read a little bit more. So they were scattered because there were no shepherds. And when they were scattered, they became food for the wild animals. My sheep wandered over the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth. And no one searched or looked for them. This is the sad truth of shepherds. And wh what is the metaphor? What is the metaphor showing us? He's talking about leadership. Not just spiritual leadership. It's the leadership of Israel. It's both secular and spiritual. Right? And the good shepherd is in comparison to this. The good shepherd is being compared to these kinds of shepherd. And if you will uh, if you will you know, stop for a moment and look at the kind of shepherds we have today in leadership. We were praying for the elections and you all know why we should be praying for the elections. Leadership. We are just not able to, we are struggling to trust our leadership. Will they look after us? Will they take care of us? Will they provide for us, the freedoms that we need, the jobs that we need, the protection and the security that we need. We are praying because we need good leadership. What is the quality of leadership in this world today? It's very pathetic, isn't it? There is no leader that we can really trust to look after us and take care of us. Many promises are made during elections. Can we trust them? Will those promises be fulfilled? So, the indictment is not, is, is, is uh, widespread. It is global. The indictment that God brings to the shepherds of this world through the nation of Israel is that you don't care for the sheep. So what does God do about this? 
what does god want to do about because god doesn't trust the shepherds of this world through the prophet jeremiah he says i will provide a shepherd after my own heart i will give you a shepherd after my own heart and notice what else he says through ezekiel for this is what the sovereign lord says i myself will search for my sheep and look after them i myself he himself now will become a shepherd as a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them so while i look after my sheep i will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness who is this shepherd jesus christ our lord that is why jesus is the good shepherd he is the shepherd after god's own heart god provides the shepherd the good shepherd for us he has come to tend for his sheep he himself has come to tend for his sheep we have to ask the question what kind of a shepherd is he now we read we read the scripture and there are so many things about the good shepherd right so many things about the good shepherd i want to focus on one and as i focus on that one you and i should begin to see that my focus is going to shift from the shepherd my focus will shift from the shepherd the sheep are you with me let's carry on i want us to look at or rather focus on this particular saying of jesus of the good shepherd he says i know my sheep and my sheep know me i know my sheep and my sheep know me one over read that scripture for us or rather it was the song right uh he knows us he knows us he knitted us he created us he you know knows us even before we were born he wants to know us did you ever think about that this shepherd wants to know you and and he knows us better than you know yourself he not only knows what you think what you like he not only knows that you have a pretty face as i look at all these beautiful young ladies here sitting in the front and of course all the other ladies also he knows your choices he knows your uh, what you choose for your breakfast and lunch and dinner he he knows you so well he knows you but you know what else he knows you he knows your faults he knows your shortcomings he knows your motivations whether they are good or whether they are bad you and i might not know our motivations sometimes we do things and we don't even really know our motivations until somebody else points it out oh why did you do this and they judge you and by saying oh you did this because of that do you know your motivations the good shepherd knows he knows the worst parts of each and every one of us he knows yours and my secret sins do you have secret sins be honest do you hide 
some things that you don't want others to know. The good shepherd knows that. But the point I want to make is he knows you in and out. He knows you even better than you know yourself. Yet he loves you. Yet he comes to you and says, I will lay down my life for you. This good shepherd just doesn't talk the talk, but walks the walk. I could be talking more about the good shepherd, but you remember what I just said? I'm going to shift my focus. I want to, I want to take a moment and ask, what should this mean for us? What is this good shepherd that we know of written in the scripture? What does it mean for us as sheep? I've given you the theology. Sounds familiar? I've given you the theology. Some of you want an application. Most of you, or all of us want an application. And that's important. And as I, as a leader, need to recognize that. I need to understand that theology is not going to transform me. But we need the theology. Would you agree? We need the theology. Application comes only from the theology. It doesn't come from psychology and it doesn't come from history and geography or science. It comes from theology. And so I want to ask the question, what does this mean for us? We seem to know the good shepherd, at least one part of it, that he knows us. So embarrassing for us that he knows us. When you go inside the bathroom, he knows exactly what you do. Though nobody else knows what you do. He knows us. What does it mean for us? Reflect with me. Please reflect with me. I'm going to shock sheep to sheep. And I'm, we are all sheep here. Okay? We have a good shepherd. Okay, let's remember that. I am now talking as a sheep, not as a shepherd. Or under shepherd. I can never be the shepherd. I, I can only be the under shepherd as a leader in the church. But I am talking as a sheep. We are so happy to have a good shepherd who knows us. But, question Is it necessary for the sheep to know one another? Please give some thought. Is it necessary for the sheep to know the other sheep? If the good shepherd knows us and we know the good shepherd, do we then need to know one another as sheep? Isn't it necessary for us to know each other? Some of us know each other for many years. I known some of you for 50 years as sheep. Maybe some for 30 or less years, some for 10 years, 7 years. We know each other to some extent. We are continuing to know each other. But my question as I lead with that question to another question. When you know me, when I know you, will you accept me even though you know my faults? When you come to know the dark side of me, when you come to know that I have faltered, that I have faulted, that I have made mistakes, that I have struggled and I continue to struggle. Will you as sheep accept another sheep? 
my good shepherd accepts me but will my sheep accept me will you as sheep accept one another can we look at our fellow human brethren struggling in so many different ways faltering falling down and seeing that sometimes offenses come can we still extend the hand of friendship or are we going to reject one another will my good shepherd reject me even though he knows me he knows the desperate sickening dirty stinking heart that i have yet he accepts me will you and i when we know the faults of others will we accept one another my wife and i were traveling from delhi to srinagar om prakash our brethren our brother in delhi had invited us and uh, as we sat waiting for the plane to be full uh, we took the window seat in the aisle the, the middle seat and then the aisle seat was left and there was an old man that was coming he was being assisted i think he was and he came and sat beside me i was in the middle and as the plane uh, taxied and took off and then of course the snacks were served and and this man seemed a very stern man he had a mask so i couldn't see his full face and so he was uh, seemed quite uh you know occupied was not concerned about what was going around him and uh, aerostus was saying put on your seat belts and his seat belt was not put on and i was just wondering to myself do i help him because he was an older man he was a little shaky and i i said better not because i was not sure whether he would be upset if i say you know please can i help you put on your seat belt so i just kept quiet but the snacks were served and amazingly he bought some snack cashew nuts and uh, as we moved for uh, as the plane carried on he slowly opened the pack uh the cashew nuts it comes in a nut case if you flown by indigo you will what it means um he lowered his mask opened the casual case even before he took out what casual he turned to me and he offered me the casual ones i said thank you so much sir i am okay and then he extended it to my wife I asked her, would you like a cashew? She said, no, I'm okay. And uh, I said, that's all right, thank you so much. And then he slowly started eating his cashews. What came to my mind was this. I was a complete stranger. And yet, this man, who didn't know me from adam was extending acceptance as a co-passenger it may be a courtesy you might say but for me i was wary of this man he seemed a very stern man but he suddenly made my help my heart to melt he provided acceptance to a co-passenger traveling with him you and i know each other for so many years you know some of my faults i know some of your faults will you accept
like I said, we know Uncle Dan, Uncle uh, Auntie Mary, we know Praveenanna, we know Sachinanna, Shanti Akka, Ravi Anna, Are they strangers to any one of us? Did you notice how I called them? Not Pastor Ravi, not Pastor Sachin, not Superintendent Dan, even though some of you can't pronounce that yet. I'm just taking I'm just joking. No. Our office doesn't describe us. Our role does not necessarily describe us. We are Auntie, Auntie Mary, Uncle Dan. We are Praveen Anna, Sachin Anna. We are family. We are brothers and sisters. We are brothers and sisters first. Before we are superintendent, pastor, associate pastor, leader. We are brothers and sisters. Will I accept you? Will you accept me? On the night Jesus was arrested, Jesus knew who would betray him. And yet, Jesus knelt down and washed the feet of Judas. Jesus knew him that he was going to betray him. Betray him to death. And yet, Jesus knelt down and washed the feet of Judas. Jesus, the good shepherd, was still accepting. Judas. Is that too much grace? Is anything like that too much grace? Will you and I treat one another as co-passengers, as brethren? Take a look at that picture again. What do you see? What do you see? Jesus knows and accepts no matter what. That's the theology. That's the theology. What do you see now? What do you and I see? Sheep following the shepherd. Is that all what you see? Is that all what you and I see? Sheep following the shepherd. What about the sheep and sheep? What are they doing? They are together. They are together following the shepherd. Are they kicking each other? Are they biting each other? Are they fighting with each other? They are all looking to the good shepherd and following the good shepherd. That's the application. Tough one. Right? The theology gives us a tough application. Dear brethren, dear sheep, dear fellow, Fellowship, we have been a church for 50 years. We just celebrated our 50th. We have come through many, many struggles. And you know some of them. I know some of the struggles you have come through. And some of you still going through many struggles. We have known each other for all these years. My appeal to you. Let us continue to know each other. 
but more importantly as we know each other and as we know the ugly side of each other please please extend your acceptance of one another do we know the good shepherd how do i know how do you know that i know the good shepherd you will know that i know the good shepherd by the way i treat you by the way i treat you if i am ac- accepting you i know my good shepherd if i reject you whose voice are we listening to going back to the video whose voice are we listening when we learn to treat one another no matter how many faults we have then we know the good shepherd pray with me gracious good shepherd in jesus christ thank you for being our good shepherd thank you for knowing us and knowing us thank you for sacrificing your life for us help us lord to know one another and when it is necessary help us to sacrifice for one another even though sometimes it is so hard in the name of the good shepherd jesus christ our lord thank you uncle for that very encouraging the much needed to all what exactly the good shepherd and how we as sheep has to be in closing let us all brethren raise to our feet and sing this song asking god to lead us and we need his care savior like a shepherd lead us i request the kids to come forward the shepherd leads the sheep he leads the flock in thy presence as we are so i used to know the shepherd bless jesus bless jesus love has bought us
Let's look unto the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so very much for giving us this wonderful opportunity that we all brothers and sisters could come to this place and worship you and to celebrate, celebrate one life with you and with one another. Lord, thank you very much for helping us throughout the service in worship and we do believe that the songs we sang and the prizes we sang are acceptable in your sight. And also, Lord, thank you so very much for speaking to us through your servant. It is such a good news, Lord, that you are our shepherd and we are your sheep. And you know us thoroughly. And yet, you are ready to die. Yet, you laid your life for us, Lord. And uh, we cannot thank you enough for that. Lord, it is so difficult for us to accept ourselves. But you know, knowing completely about us, you accepted us, Lord. Grant us the same grace in our lives so that we may be able to accept our brethren as you accept us, Lord. It is difficult, Lord, and for in our own flesh and blood, it is impossible. We need your spirit. We need your spirit's guidance. We need your spirit's empowerment in us, Lord. And pour your, pour your love and pour your spirit in our hearts so that we also may be a true fellow sheep along with our sheep, following you, our good shepherd, Lord. Lead us and guide us. Through everything we do, Lord, your name shall be exalted. Till we meet here again, may your provision, protection, presence, of, presence be with each and every one of us. Thank you so very much for listening to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's bless uh, one another with a benediction. May the God of peace, through the blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, and the Holy Spirit our Comforter, and the fellowship of the saints, equip you with everything good for doing His will. And may He work in us what is pleasing to Him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus that together you may with one voice glorify God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.